There aren't many better ways to capture a moment in time than taking a great photo. But how do you do this when that moment passes in the blink of an eye and the photo you took comes out super blurry? Or what if you want to capture a, a sense of movement in a photo, but you don't want it to look like one giant smear? This is where knowing how to properly adjust your camera's shutter speed can be the key to getting your shots perfect. Along with aperture and ISO, which we previously covered here on TechWiki, shutter speed is one of the three key exposure variables that will affect how a picture looks. Shutter speed is simply a measure of how long the camera's, you guessed it, shutter stays open to let light through. Unlike aperture, which is a measure of how wide the shutter opens, and ISO, which controls the sensitivity to light, the shutter speed directly affects how long the camera will physically see whatever it's pointed at. Meaning that if you have two cameras pointing at the same moving object, but with significantly different shutter speeds, the two pictures will come out looking dramatically different. Why is this? Well, if you have your camera set to a slow shutter speed, the shutter will be open long enough to capture a fast moving object traveling from one place to another. And since you're recording a still image, not a video, which is comprised of multiple still images, this will just come out as a blur. A fast shutter speed, on the other hand, will open and close so quickly that you won't see much motion at all. Just like it's harder for you to perceive something as actually moving if you open and shut your eyes very, very quickly. So the result then is a frozen moment captured in the photo without blurring. Now typically shutter speeds are measured in fractions of a second, with speeds between 1 60th of a second and 1 250th of a second being common for everyday photography, such as landscape shots or casual portraits of your friends. But what if you're getting shots of something like a basketball game where the players are running up and down the court, or you're doing uh, nature photography and need to capture a fast moving bird or wildcat? This is where much quicker shutter speeds come in handy to prevent blurring. And higher end cameras can have shutter speeds as quick as 1 4,000th or 1 8,000th of a second. And some highly specialized cameras can even handle 1 16,000th of a setting that can capture really cool shots, like a bullet as it travels through the air. Well, hold on a second then. Are fast shutter times always the best thing then? Well, Although slow shutter speeds can produce undesirable blur in some situations, in others they can produce really cool effects that you just can't get any other way. Have you ever seen those shots of cities at night where highway traffic just looks like long red and white streaks? Those were produced by using long shutter speeds of two seconds or even longer. Because while things like buildings and street signs will stay in one place, the cars are obviously moving, meaning that you can get those cool light streaks without making the city around them look blurry. Slow shutter speeds are also useful for making waterfalls look like they're moving without affecting the rest of the photo, and even showing the movement of stars across the night sky, where a shutter might be open for hours at a time. Just make sure you're using a really stable tripod or something else to keep your camera in one place so that final shot looks crisp and sharp. Another thing to keep in mind is that shutter speed affects the amount of light hitting your image sensor. So make sure that you're adjusting your ISO and your aperture to compensate if you're going to be experimenting with really fast or really slow shutter speeds. But once you master shutter speed, you'll be able to do some extremely cool things with your camera. If you're in the right place at the right time, you might even get some sick shots of Terran pulling off stunts on his Razor scooter. And somewhat ironically, this is a video about still photography. Today's episode sponsor is Videoblocks, whose unlimited library remains the best deal in stock footage. You can get unlimited downloads from a library of over $10 million worth of footage. We're talking After Effects, templates, motion, backgrounds, all kinds of great stuff. And they are now adding new footage to the unlimited library twice a month. And subscribers get free access to the new footage at no 
additional cost. As always, it's 100% royalty free and yours to use forever in personal or commercial projects. Videoblocks has also now launched a marketplace where contributors get 100% commission and the customers save. So they don't take a cut and pass the savings directly on to the customers, which is an average of 40% on HD and 4K downloads versus competition like Shutterstock and Pond5. So the unlimited library and the marketplace makes it your one-stop shop for footage and you can get unlimited access to the unlimited library with your membership. Awesome. With just two downloads, the $99 annual subscription pays for itself. And if you have more specific footage needs, buying directly from the global contributor community makes a ton of sense. So all you've got to do is head over to our video blocks link in the video description to sign up for a seven day free trial, which gives you 140 free HD clips valued at 49 bucks a clip. Try it out down below. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, hit that like button. But if you disliked it, well, dislike the video and uh, maybe check out our other channels, which you might like more. We've got our Linus Tech Tips channel. We've got Channel Super Fun, which has some really great videos lately. As always, leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fastest Possibles and don't forget to subscribe and follow and all that good stuff.